Good morning, Dwayne here at Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, today is July 17th, and this Friday we just finished up our last class of the season. Uh, we had, boy, I lost count. Well, we had 11 weeks. We had 11 weeks back to back of classes. Um, so, I mean, the students from one week, they would have breakfast on Saturday morning and pull out. And Sunday afternoon, the new students started rolling in. So it's 11 straight weeks. Um, but it was very, very good time. It was, uh, uh, it was an experiment for Mama and I to see if we could actually pull this thing off. And we got it done. And, and I think the students learned and, and had a good time. And so if, if there was one lesson that was the most helpful and the most oft repeated throughout the class. What was that one lesson? Now, so what I mean by that, so for these classes, sometimes we had students bring their own horses in. Now this is not a horse training deal. The horses had to be broke to ride. They had to be calm and safe. Um, but they brought their horses in and, and then a lot of times we had students who didn't have horses who came in who would ride my horses. Now, was there one thing that I saw both with students with their own horses and students riding my horses that I had to address over and over again, the number one thing? And there is. Um, and I had several students leave here just amazed at one small thing that made such an incredible difference in their horse and in their riding. Um, and what is that thing? Be quiet and be still. It's amazing how much a difference that'll make in your horse. Now I wanna talk about this morning. I wanna talk about that with your horse. Now, that's not always the problem. This, this information, this knowledge is just another tool in your toolbox. When you start trying to figure out, you have a fidgety horse, you have a horse that when you're on the trail, they're always trying to speed up, they're always wanting to get up and trot. They're, they're always, they're they're rarely just calm, head down and walking. Okay, I'm not talking about horse training. I'm not talking about teaching a horse to do something. You have a horse that gives to the bit. You have a horse that stops. Uh, you have a horse that neck reins. But that horse is just not a calm, relaxed horse. And we want our horse to be calm and relaxed. We want to be calm and relaxed and we want our horse to be. So what's a simple simple step that we can do to just cause our horse to calm down. And it's not training, okay? Training is not always the answer. The answer a lot of times is just get out of the horse's way. All right, so now, these horses that come in that have had this that we've helped, they've all been broke horses and they've all been in neck reining, and they've all had a shank bit of some sort, different, different types, different uh, styles, uh, but a bit with shanks, all of them did. And so there were two things that we addressed that just made an instant, instant change in horse. Now, if you understand, now I've got a, what's called a corrector bit here. I only have like three bits on a place that have shanks. So I just pulled this one off, uh, it'll do to illustrate, now, when we approach horsemanship from a communication standpoint, we need to understand that everything this horse does is communication to the horse. You've heard the old saying, from God's mouth to my ears. Well, it's from your hands to your horse's mouth, all right? This bit here swivels, these shanks swivel like this, and this one swivels like this and these swivel like this, and the bit swivels like this. And depending on your bit, every movement, everything in that bit does is a separate communication to your horse. It's noise, all right? It's just constant noise. And when we ride, when we ride, we don't realize how much um, pointless, nonsense communication we're sending to the horse. We're like, hey, 
There goes a deer, squirrel. What are y'all doing this week? Hey, I need to get a sandwich. I need to do this, I need to do that. And even this right here is sending so much signal to the horse. And then our hands get kind of heavy and we're like, and, and so the horse after a while, the horse is like a nervous person that's sitting and surrounded by six or eight people that are talking to them nonstop about five different subjects over top of each other, all right? So the first thing we did on these is, is I took the bit, I said, look, let's try, let's just try a simple snaffle bit, all right? Let's just try a simple D-ring snaffle. Now again, we're not training a horse to turn, we're not training a horse to stop, we're just trying to calm a horse down. Now, you always need to make sure about your feed. Feed is always a factor in your horse's energy level. We've talked about that a little bit in some other videos. If you're dumping more high protein feed and more alfalfa hay to your horse, then they can burn off in proper exercise. They're gonna be a jacked up nervous horse. But that factor aside, you take this bit here, this is the simplest of bits, all right? So every time on every one of these horses, um, I took whatever shank bit they had out and I put this in. And so sometimes the question is, are they going to respond to that? Well, the answer to that is if your horse will not respond to a snaffle bit, that's a horse that needs the snaffle bit because it means they're not responding to the proper communication and they need to go back to the snaffle bit. But every one of these horses, I said, well, let's just try it, okay? It's your horse. You do, you figure it out, but let's just try it. And so we would take whatever shank bit they're used to riding in and just put a simple snaffle bit in their mouth. And the horses would just And then the second thing we did was I would tell them, we'd start out in the arena. And what I would see and what I see so many folks do, and, and we're talking about trail riding here, okay? Your horse, you ask your horse, go down this trail. That's what you ask your horse to do, walk down this trail. So your horse is walking down the trail. But I've seen it here so much this summer, the horse hears something in the bushes and the horse just curiously turns around and looks to see what that is. And they take the rein and they rein the horse's back head around. And there's a horse kind of coming up, up the trail a little close on this side and they kind of come around this way to look at it and they rein the horse's head back around. The trail does are very gentle like this and so they're over here doing this, trying to steer like it's a car. So they're constantly in the horse's mouth. And sometimes it's like the horse, maybe we're going down, down a shallow grade. And so the horse is walking, which is what they ask the horse to do. But the horses start picking up speed and start walking faster. And like, oh my goodness, my horse is fixing going to trot. So they pull back on the horse's bit. So they're just constantly, constantly yammering at the horse and that's what you're doing you're constantly nagging your horse you and you don't mean to you don't mean to but you won't shut up all right and when you use a shank bit a lot of times you're constantly talking and you're constantly talking in four different languages all right and so your horse is just up here so i had the one horse i said okay let's just put this bit in and so we went to the arena and I said, now your safety, your safety's in your hands, okay? But unless you feel like you're in danger, I want you to take the reins. Now we hold the reins with these split reins. I don't know if I can do this very clearly and accurately without a horse. Let's see if I can do this and make it clear. So we hold the reins in the, in the simplest manner, the most effective manner, all right? So we take this left rein and we drape it over the horse's neck over to the right. It's not gonna be real clear here, but the reins are held like this, okay? Now, the horse neck reins, I'm not gonna take that away from the horse, but you get the reins gathered up, and I said, you take the reins and you put your palm, the palm of your hand you rest it on the pommel of the saddle and don't pick it up. 
Now just smooch the horse, squeeze your legs, and let the horse start walking around the edge of the arena. And keep your hand down. Now at one point, the one horse, there was a, just a little gentle dip. And this horse was a horse, she was one of those nervous horses that just kept trying to speed up. And so the rider felt the horse just, she felt the horse kind of come up, so she pulled back on the rein. I'm like, why'd you do that? Well, I didn't want her to trot. Was she trotting? No. Then don't correct the horse for doing what you think she's thinking about doing. All right? That's like spanking a child because they're thinking about doing something wrong. Don't do that. Give them the chance to do right. Your horse is not going to learn to do right if you never give it the opportunity to make the right decision. That horse had the, had the opportunity at that point to make a decision, and uh, but that decision was taken away from the horse. I said, keep your hand on that pommel unless you get into a safety situation and let the horse make the decision. And so we put that snaffle bit, and so all of this stuff stopped. All of this stopped. I don't think you realize how much so many riders are doing this down the trail. The horse would kind of come out a little bit and they'd bump it back in. I'm like, the horse would go this way, they'd bump it back. It's in an arena, it's on the rail. Where's it gonna go? Leave it alone. And in just a few seconds, that horse was like, head was down, it was just walking. Head was down, it was just, she said, this horse is never like this. And I'm like, no, no offense, but we never shut up. And we never give the horse a chance to do the right thing. You want to be calm. I mean, you want your horse to be calm. The only way to have a calm horse is to be a calm rider. And by being a calm rider, that means you have to be, you have to have calm hands. And you need to take a quiet, simple bit, a quiet, simple bit, and you need to have quiet, simple hands if you expect to have a quiet simple horse all right i hope that helps you um we have a we have another session of school starting up this fall first week of september going up through the i think the first second week of november uh, we still have um, about a dozen spots open roughly uh, so if uh, if you're interested and you and you want to sign up you give us a call. We keep the classes down to five people and it changes regularly what fills and what don't. So we don't have a schedule on the internet. You have to call and we work with you with your schedule and what we have open, okay? And uh, so we'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, the content for the next little while, here in about three or four days, mom and I are taking off and we're heading out to Wyoming and then up to Idaho and we're gonna we're gonna run away and hide. If you wanna find us, you're gonna to have to burn the stump and sift the ashes because we're not gonna be around for a while. All right? So if you like this, click like, subscribe if you haven't. Hit that share button and send it to somebody that you think it might help. And in the meantime, be logical, be reasonable, be safe, and have fun.